name, amen. Thank you, Andy. Well, it is so good to see everybody today, and uh, we're glad that people are here. It's amazing when you stop and think about what's happened. Forty, Forty people gathered at O'Hare Airport in February of 1989. People who had been doing some ministry and involved in a few things and we got together and thought, wouldn't it be great if we could start coming together to help each other and to care about one another, support each other, learn from one another. And everyone at that room in O'Hare Airport from around the country, and some of you were there. Is there any, raise your hand if you were at that meeting. You see a few people around that were at that meeting. And, and uh, it was amazing to see what has happened since then. We got together a couple times, 15 of us or so in the summer, planned the first conference, and then had a conference, just said mostly word of mouth, about 130 people showed up in Chicago, and we had the first conference. The second one we had over at Circle Urban Ministries, where Glenn K. Ryan is the executive director, and probably close to 300 people showed up the second year. And Noel will give us the official figure next, uh, tomorrow, or Saturday, but it seems like this is uh, going to be a really good conference, and not just because of numbers, but it's good because you're here, and because you are what makes up CCDA. CCDA is not an organization, and those of you that are first-timers here, you may, you may, you may get a little mixed up on that. We, we really don't do ministry. What we do is bring those of you involved in ministry in various ways. Some of you are relocators and live in the heart of a struggling community. Some of you are people who have supported those who are doing that. Some of you are prayer warriors. Some of you are from suburban churches that have made a commitment to some community that's under-resourced. And together we all make up CCDA. Every one of you is important. As it says in 1 Corinthians 12, every member of the body of Christ is important. And you are. And that's why we're really glad that you came. This is actually the 21st time that we've had a little conference. And now we are growing up, and it is amazing the milestones. You know, my family is... is uh, kind of interesting. My family kind of grew up with CCDA. The young man on the right there, that's, uh, that's Ann's and my son, Austin. And Austin is 21 years old. And so he was one when CCDA started back in 1989. And as we have walked together, and there's Angela graduating and getting her master's degree in education. And Andrew, our son, who's, and his wife, Stacy, who have just all grown up in CCDA. And many of you know them. Many of you helped us raise them. And the Lawndale folks that are here, you, uh, you helped raise our, our family together in the CCDA movement and, and how wonderful that is. And I'm so thankful. Ann and I have been married for 32 years. And uh, our three children there, they all uh, love the city. Angela and Andrew both live in the city. And just live five minutes away from Ann and I. But we think about that. And of course, this, this is a special year for CCDA. Not only is this our 20th kind of anniversary, but we're really going to celebrate next year in Chicago when we're 21. You know, 20 is not much of a birthday party. 21, that's when we become legal. We are legal next year, all right? We're adults, and we get to be who we want to be starting next year. And so next year we're going to do that. But it's also a milestone. It was 2010 is a milestone. And because it was in 2010, subtract 50 to 1960 that John and Vera May came to, back to Mississippi. And so there's going to be a great celebration in 2010 down in Jackson, Mississippi with John and Vera May celebrating 50 years of ministry. We hope you'll join us down there on June 12th to be a part of that. And then not only is another milestone is that John started his 80th year of life. He's 79 today. He turned 79 back in June and he will be 80. This is his 80th year of life. 
And we're going to celebrate that in a major way next year in Chicago. We're going to have a birthday party for JP. We're going to let him talk until he doesn't want to talk anymore. We're not going to have a time. We're going to say, start talking. I'm not going to pull his coattail like I had to do last night. I mean, I let him, he was getting too wound up last night, wasn't it? Well, he was, he was getting it, but he gave it to us today. You did all right, JP. All right, you did well. You did well, brother. And, uh, and so we, we see these milestones, you know, and you're a part of it. And I know some of you have come today, and we alluded to that last night. We, some of you have come today with, with heavy hearts. You've come to this conference. These are tough economic times. But you have decided that you wanted to be here even in these tough economic times. It was a sacrifice for you to come. Everybody here I know had to sacrifice. And some of you have real heavy hearts. Things aren't going well. Things are difficult, possibly. Maybe something struggling in your own personal life, your family. I know I've come to CCDA over the years many times with struggles. Sometimes things weren't going well with my kids. Sometimes things weren't going well at the ministry and at church. And some of you have that. Some of you are on a, on a high, as, as uh, we talked about. But, you know, it's, it's really amazing. In CCDA, you are CCDA. Even if this is your first time, we had a lot of first-timers last night raise their hand. But we want you to know this is family. We're family now. You're here. And uh, my talk usually is, is not some big inspirational talk. Those of you that have been coming, it's not a report. But it's, it's a talk about where we are and what's, what God may be doing. And just thinking about you, it's kind of I represent the board. And we've got a wonderful board of directors that have been committed for all of these 20 years to CCDA and committed to you. You, might, you probably figured out by now there's really no big shots in CCDA. I mean, we're just all a part of the body of Christ. And we're so glad that you're here to be a part of that. And we look forward to that. I... I, I do us every summer I for the last four or five years I take off about eight weeks and do a study leave and I read about 20 books and one of the books that I read this year was I, I read the Old Testament for the first time just starting it like I was gonna read any book and just reading it, it took me a week reading about 10 hours a day I read a little book alongside of it the introduction of each book but I read the Old Testament through and it, and it was just a, such an exciting read but there's three books I want to highlight that are all really CCDA books that, that I read I, in, in, in the 20 that I read this summer. One of them is, is by uh, a C, one of our great CCDA people. He's one of our young cohorts that we have are, are up and budding leaders. Uh, and Andrew Marin wrote this book and it's called Love is an Orientation. And it's about our response to the gay community and what is the church and how can the church and the gay community love one another and engage in each other. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It's because, you know, that's a part of... He has... Uh, Andrew Marin has relocated into the gay community in Chicago. That's where he lives. And he's a part of that. He and his wife, they spend their life there. And, and it's such a wonderful thing. It's a great book to read if you haven't. And, and I, and I want to highlight uh, Su Chan's book. You know, he alluded to it last night, but if you've not read his book, uh, The Next Evangelicalism, isn't it, wonder, isn't it just wonderful to hear the statistics of what he's talking about? And the, the people of color in our country are growing. The immigrant population in their faith, in their churches, they're, they're vibrant. And that, that means most of you are coming from some really vibrant churches and you're making a difference, but it's how can we free the church today, particularly in America, from this, from this Western mindset and, from, and, and even being held captive by the Western mindset. It's a, it's a wonderful book that I would hope that you would read to just get you thinking and making a difference. And then another book I read that is written by a ccda -er, although he's passed on to be with the Lord. His name is Howard Thurman. Maybe some of you read this book. He's, the title of it is Jesus and the Disinherited. And uh, my good friend who is in a, is in a support group with uh, Noel and I. Noel and I are in a support group that we meet every month for three and a half hours with six other men that we get together to pray for one another, to help each other. And one of our brothers, uh, Reverend Marshall Hatch from New Mount Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago said, Coach, you need to read this book. And so I read this book this summer and I had heard about it and maybe read pieces of it. It was written, Thur Thur uh, Howard Thurman, interestingly, went to uh, Morehouse with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s father. This book was written in 1948. 
but it is as relevant today as it was then. Dr. Thurman planted the first intentional interracial church in America. And this book is, is such a, a great book, I highly recommend it to you and encourage you to read it, it when, you're, when you get time. It's, it's so, uh, at Lawndale, we've had some, we've had some uh, wonderful milestones also. We just celebrated 25 years as a medical clinic, and uh, last year we saw about 140,000 patient visits. Our CEO is, is here, Bruce Miller, and, and we'll do a workshop, and our founding physician and his wife and two girls, uh, Art and Linda Jones and Kelly and Caitlin, as a family, are here at the CCDA conference. And it, it's a milestone that uh, 25 years of... of caring for people who are underserved in the clinic uh, as we've been there. But there's, there's, there's another milestone that I think is pretty significant. Many of you have read Real Hope in Chicago. And in the book Real Hope in Chicago, chapter one is entitled Jojo. And Jojo was the one who uh, in high school, along with his good buddy Victor, were two of those young people who founded Lawndale Community Church. It was their idea to start the church. And, and jo, uh, Joe and Victor always come to the conference, and I think they're here. So Joe, uh, Joe, come on up here, and I want you to see Joe. And uh, we, we used to call him Joe Joe. Now Joe's the uh, uh, associate pastor at Lawndale Community Church. Victor, if you're here, come on up too, wherever Victor is. And uh, this is Joe Atkins. And uh, Joe, if you can believe it, Joe was on the wrestling team at Farragut when I started coaching wrestling there back in 19, thank you, Joe. And uh, back in 19, uh, whatever it was, you just messed up my mic, Joe. Oh, sorry. That's all right, that's all right. And uh, put that back on my ear. Thank you. Uh, I usually mess him up, but uh, today you did that. Uh, but Joe and uh, Victor, they were both on the wrestling team at Farragut, and they, they're the ones that had the vision. You see, in CCDA, one of our key components is listening to the community. And if we don't listen to the community, we don't have a chance of getting it right. We often say the people with the problem have the best solutions to solve the problem. Well, Joe and Victor in that high school Bible study were a part of that one that, that said, let's start a church in the neighborhood. And this year, we hit a milestone. Last week, Pastor Joe had a birthday. He had a birthday. Last week, Pastor Joe turned 50 years old. 50 years old. Now, Joe, I can't have you come out here. You got to go back early and preach at Lawndale, but you know, you don't preach, but uh, give us a little word here about what God's been doing in your life. Well, good morning. It's really great to be here today. I'm so excited, excited to be here, and uh, um, I'm more excited that God has preserved me and kept me, and uh, His Word has sustained my life in many ways. And, um, you know, Coach and share basically, you know, everything in regards to what happened in my life uh, as I grew up in Lundell and also was a part of, uh, of, of, of Lundell Community Church in, in the earlier days. Uh, but there were some things that you know, occurred you know, during the course of my time there uh, that was not cool. Um, but God you know, kept my life in, in, in a major way, and I'm so thankful and grateful. And so uh, 16 years ago, I was 34 years old, and I walked into a treatment center to get my life together. And uh, it was amazing that, um, um, that, 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 that that came back to my mind as I was reflecting uh, last week on my birthday, 50 years old. I, 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 I called, it called back to mind that it was 16 years ago. And so as I was journaling and just writing my thoughts down, you know, I was on the lakefront, and I was just writing my thoughts down, and it came to me that 16 years ago, uh, God allowed me to come into a place to get my life together and to turn my life back over to him. And in, 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 in essence, you know, I was born again. You know, so, so here I am, 50 years old, and so I looked at it and I said, sweet 16. Mm -hmm. All I right. said, sweet 16, and, and, and so that kind of coincided with me being excited that I was 50 years old. And, and, and so I am excited. I'm so thankful and grateful, you know, that God watched over and kept me. And then allowed me to be a great husband to my, uh, my wife and then a, a great father to my children. You know, and, 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 and the scripture, you know, that, that, that really uh, kind of uh, 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 set, you know, my life up is... Um, it's Psalm 119 and, and 71 and 72, you know, but of course it starts off with do good to your servant, O Lord, you know, and, and, and teach me your ways and your decrees. And it says that before I was afflicted, I went astray. Before I was, you know, tore down and, and things happened in my life, I went astray. And, but 71 and 72 says that it was good that I was afflicted. 
It was good that I went through what I went through because now the laws of your mouth are more precious to me than a thousand pieces of silver and gold. And so that's my life today is that I'm going to celebrate my birthday every day until I'm 51. All right. You know, so, all right. so if right. you see me out here, you know, celebrate with me, you know, being 50 years old. And God bless you. I love you guys. And I'm so glad to be here today. Amen. Amen. Give Victor that mic. Victor, uh, Victor goes with me on a lot of my speaking engagements, and uh, I remember he was with me. Uh, I spoke at the uh, commencement, the graduation for the graduate school at Wheaton College a few years ago, and right in the middle of it, they weren't ready for this. I said, he's out in the audience. I said, Victor, stand up and tell us your favorite verse and quote it for us. So we can't have you be here and not do something, Victor. So give us that. One of the founders of Lawndale Community Church 31 years ago. Uh, my favorite verse is from uh, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, which is our yearly verse at our church. Is, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to our own understanding, and all our ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. Amen. All right. Thank you, brothers. All right. Well, talking of milestones, there's been a lot of milestones. And on last November, my wife Ann and I had the privilege of being in Grant Park with a lot of people. And we were standing there and we were with two families from Chicago. D the Dublaclays, who are a family in our church, and then Frank Wilson and his family. And you can see their entire families there on the screen. While we were waiting for, to find out who won the election, it really almost didn't matter who won at that moment. The crowd was, was just so electrified. And Frank, who has the blue shirt on there in the picture. Oh, well on my screen I got the, uh, what am I doing wrong here? Okay, I'm looking at my computer and I got the picture up there just looking as nice as it could be, so I don't know what happened. Did we do something wrong, uh, BJ? JP, this doesn't count on my time, does it? It counts on my time? Okay, well, let, let, uh... something went wrong. Well, let me, let me tell you the story. Uh, hopefully it'll mean a little more when you see the families there. But anyway, uh, we were standing out there in Grant Park, and as we were there, Frank came up and he and I were talking a little bit, and Frank said to me, you know, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know Frank as well as I know the Dublaclays, because they don't come to our church, but Frank said to me, you know, I graduated from high school, I don't know, Coach, if you know, but I graduated, I grew up in Oklahoma City, and I graduated from high school, and when I graduated from high school, the president of the University of Oklahoma spoke at my high school commencement. And so he, uh, he talked, and that night he talked to our graduating class and said that you can be anybody you want to be. As a matter of fact, you can do anything that you want to do. And at that moment, he said, as, and as actually, you could become the president of the United States. Now, he went home that night, and Frank's dad, Frank Sr., came into his bedroom and sat on the edge of his bed. And he said, Frank, I want to tell you something. You are a talented young man, and you really could be about anything you want to be. But the speaker tonight at your graduation misspoke. And he said to his son, he said, you will never be able to be the president of the United States because of the color of your skin. That night, when they announced who became the president. Frank's kids, Frank went over and hugged Frank III, who's his son, hugged him. And the Dublicates and their family, they, they hugged each other. Their tears were running down all of their cheeks, as it was among most. Something significant happened in our country in that an African American was elected president of the United States. Now, some of you here may not have voted for him. And you know what? That's quite all right. CCDA is not a democratic organization. It's not a Republican organization. 
different people stand and we have speakers share their political viewpoints by just who they are. We're all political. But the fact that an African American was elected president in the United States is an extremely significant thing that happened this year. It's an extremely significant thing. And uh, we can all celebrate that, whether we voted or not for him. That's not even the issue in many respects. But the respect is that we are making some progress, and it's a milestone. But it has, it, 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 talking of the political thing has me do it. My heart gets grieved sometimes when I hear people in CCDA think that we are one way or another. I want you to know, and this is, this is the leadership of the board, this is Noel, it's John, it's Barbara, it's everyone, is that whatever your political viewpoint is, however you come down on health care or any other issue, you are welcome at the table here. As a matter of fact, we need you at the table. And please don't run away from the table when something gets uncomfortable. We, we need each other. And so don't, don't ever get the idea that CCDA is one political party or the next. We are together. We're the body of Christ. We need every one of you. And yet the milestone of celebrating an African-American president is something that we in CCDA can do. And I saw it firsthand when a black man who was educated is a CEO of a corporate, a financial, a CFO of a corporation in Chicago today was told 20 years before that he could never be president because he was African-American and yet an African-American was elected. Things are changing. Barbara talked about that the first night and how can we continue to do that? Now, violence. Violence is, 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 is just jumping out at us everywhere. Those of you that have read in the papers about violence, you know that the violence that has taken place in Chicago. You, you've heard, it's been on YouTube, it's, it was one of the number one hits, the top ten in, in, in YouTube with this boy on the south side from Finger High School who was beaten to death by a bunch of other teenage kids. That violence. That same day in Lawndale, in our neighborhood on the west side of Chicago, Fingers on the south side, that same day, two college boys were sitting on their porch and they were shot and they both died. We had a man across the street from us, one of our neighbors, shot and killed in front of his house a couple months ago. I could talk about violence, but if, I don't know if you're, if you're like me, but violence is just running rampant in our communities. And there seems to be more young violence. We've got to get involved in that. We've got to actively be involved in that. That, that, that young man, Darius, on the south side that was, was, it touches CCDA. Where he was, he was beaten right outside of Agape Ministries on the south side of Chicago. It's one of the Here's Life Inner Cities Ministries in Chicago. Milton Massey and Mark Henko, and Mark is doing a, a workshop on Saturday and I don't know if he's here but it happened right outside there and someone from their staff went out they've relocated they live right there someone from their staff went out and pulled the young boy in they tried to save his life but they were unsuccessful most of you in here have a story a violent story of violence that is tough that's hard and we, we just we, we struggle with that we make progress in one way, but we struggle in the next. And my heart is so heavy about violence. We've had too many people. We had a young woman in our neighborhood shot and killed again just the other day. One of our young up and budding ministers, Darren Brown, preached the eulogy that happened to be at Marshall's church. And his church and our church were involved in that. It's such a painful thing. And I know many of you have some pain that you're struggling with, with some violence that has taken place. But if we're going to deal with the violence, we've got to work with the children and the youth. 
Children and youth have got to be at the core of our ministries. You can build great houses, you can have a medical clinic that sees thousands of patients, but if we're not reaching the young people, the children and the young people in our communities, we're just not going to make it. We're just not going to make it. And we've got to be involved in that. We've got to get involved in the children and the, and the youth of our communities. We've got to get involved in making a difference. We've, we've got to get back involved if you've started. We started off in Lawndale so committed to the youth, but then on the other hand, sometimes we begin to stray away. We get too involved in some of these other things. Last year, God put on ands in my heart that, you know what, we've got to get more. As the pastor of the church, we're not as involved with our young people as we should be. So this year, we're teaching, Ann and I teach the senior high Sunday school class again. And these kids are so wonderful. We, you know, we have a gym at Lawndale, but you know what? We need, we don't, we, we fight over gym time. And we have so many people that use it. So we're, we're buying a second gym three blocks from the church and opening up a second gym that kids can come to. Pastor Phil with the house is redoing an old, firehouse, uh, an old fire station called the Firehouse Community Arts Center where we're doing arts and recording studio and things with kids. we got to get more involved with the kids. Whatever you're doing when you go back home, please get back involved with our young people. We're losing our young people. We're losing them. Tutor, go to a school. Get to know their names. I'm telling you, the generation of violence is upon us. And if we don't actively get involved in that, we're going we're gonna to miss the boat. CCDA won't have the up and budding leaders to be there because tragically they're going to be gone. Now, turn in your Bible to 1 Samuel 15. And I know I don't have uh, my slides up here, and I, I'm sorry, so you really are. I have this, the verses on slides, but somehow we had a technical difficulty. So it seems like that's the story. Oh, where are they? Over there? Okay, good, good. Oh, well, then I, can, I didn't know they were over there. Well, let, me, let, me show you, let me show you the gym. You know, that's the thing. You know, that's the new gym we're buying right there. I, you gotta, give, me, give me five on that gym, huh? I mean, you got to reach those gyms. And, uh, and then uh, right next to it, there's a vacant land that our development corporation controls. And along with 12 other churches, Pastor Hatch's church is one of them. Pastor Pope's church, who's here, is another one in Chicago. We're, 12 other churches, we're building 40 brand new houses, a development. And we're, it's rental properties with some others. And it's right on the land that in 1966, Dr. King lived on that land in the house. And that house was torn down. So we're building in, in memory of Dr. King's vision of fair housing, we're building houses right there. Right next to that is the gym for those kids to participate in. And so now, if you, if you turn to, to Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, this is the story I want to close with. 1 Samuel 15, you, you, you probably know this story pretty well, but God tells Saul to go and to destroy the Amalekites. And he says, completely destroy them. I mean destroy everything. Kill all their animals. Take, wipe them out. And so Saul goes and he goes there. And as you pick up the story in verse 9, it says that, but Saul and the army spared Agad and the rest of the sheep and cattle and fat calves and lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was destroyed was, was despised and weak, and they totally destroyed that. Now, clearly we know Saul did not obey what was there. He was the king. In fact, if you, if you follow the story there and, and you look at it, you see then, and, and verse, verse 11 says that God says to Samuel, God reveals to Samuel that Saul had not done right. He had not obeyed. And so it says, I, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to Samuel, I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and not carried out my instructions. God regretted that he had made Saul king. And then as the story goes on, Samuel then comes and meets Saul. And Saul, when Saul sees Samuel, he runs up to him. And, and he says in verse, in verse 13, when Samuel reached him, Saul said, the Lord bless you. And then listen to what he says there in verse 11, verse 13. He says, I have carried out the Lord's instructions. 
which he partially did. But please know, look what Samuel says back to him in verse 14. But Samuel said, what then is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? What is this going on? If you completely did, it, did, did that, how are you saying that you've obeyed me? But Saul thought he had. But let me tell you today, my sisters and brothers, partial obedience to the word of God is disobedience. It's disobedience. Only obeying partial and part of the story is not obedience. And King Saul said he was obedient. He even had the audacity to say, I have carried out the Lord's instructions. Samuel points out to him that he didn't do that. He was unwilling to destroy the animals that were good. But then, often, the pattern is here. We see it in our own lives. What happens is, is that he wants to justify his disobedience. Saul is going to justify his disobedience. And what does he do? As you, as you read on in the story, he goes on and he, and he says, when Samuel reached him, he said that he's done it. He said, I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But then look what he says that he does in verse 21. He took the sheep and the cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, and in order to sacrifice them to the Lord, your God. So he took the ones that he was disobedient with and he gave those to God as a sacrifice wishing to justify himself, thinking that if he gave God a little bit of what he didn't do right, that then it would justify his disobedience. And verse 20, but I did obey the Lord again living in denial. I obeyed God. And I took what I didn't kill and I sacrificed it to God. But look what it says in verse 22. But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obe obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. I believe that if there's anything that derails the CCDA movement, it will be our disobedience to God. And many of us are out here today and we are justifying. We're just like Saul. We carry out part of the will of God. We do a little bit of the will of God. And as we do a little bit of it, then we think we're obedient. You know, maybe some of us in this room are, are having sex with somebody that we're not married to, but we don't get in a woman pregnant or the woman doesn't get pregnant, so we, we, we're okay because nobody knows about it. Nobody knows of our disobedience. We don't have an abortion because we don't get pregnant. So we can stand up and say that. Many of us are disobedient in how we handle so many areas of our lives. Are we like Malachi where we disobey God by not giving our money to the Lord, by not tithing? Are we all tithers in this room to your local church? Hello, somebody. I never get an amen on that. Oh, I don't have to tithe because I serve in the kingdom of God. I serve God. God, my tithe is my time. Baloney. You sound just like Saul. God, I give you my time. I don't have to give you my money. Oh, I don't know where it is with you. I'm not sure where it might be with you or where it is with me and where we're disobedient to the will of God. Maybe there's somebody that you don't love. It seems to me Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Who's persecuting you back in the neighborhood? Who is the one that's speaking against you? Who is there? That's who we pray for. Who is it that you're slandering? Hello, somebody. Who is it that you're slandering? Who is it that you're backbiting? Who is it that you're speaking against? Disobedience is disobedience, my brothers and sisters. It has absolutely nothing to do with all the good things that you do. As I said last night, if my people 
We say we're my people. We say we're God. If my people who are called by my name, the Christian Community Development Association, that's us. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and pray and seek my face, then and only then, then I will come. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Many of us are not having victory because of our disobedience. I wonder how many CCDA ministries God looks down upon. God called you into that ministry, but how many does God say, oh, I regret that I called you. I regret that I called you to be the executive director. I regret that I called you to be the pastor. I regret that I called you to be the youth worker. Oh my. Come on. Come on. Disobedience is disobedience, brothers and sisters. We cannot tolerate disobedience in the kingdom of God. And if there's anything that will sink us, it's not going to be that some of us are Republicans and some of us are Democrats or some of us are nothing. That's not going to hurt CCDA. What will hurt us is our disobedience. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. My heart is heavy. My heart is heavy when there's disobedience. Is there anyone perfect? Absolutely. Did you hear John say it today? Did you hear John say that we all need that blood? I'm not here to condemn brothers and sisters. I'm not condemning one of you. If you have been one that has struggled or are struggling, this is the day of repentance. This is the day of repentance. And I'm going to give you a chance to repent in just a moment. I'm going to ask you to come forward in a minute. We're going to have an old-fashioned repent moment wherever if you are disobedient. I'm not here to condemn. As John quoted for us, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But we cannot allow disobedience to become a part of the culture of the church, of the kingdom of God, or of CCDA. We can't allow that to happen. We cannot. Now, last year, I, I asked you to join me and to join me in, in, in prayer. And uh, I asked you to see if you would spend, encourage you to spend an hour a day alone with God. And obedience is important, but we, can, we become obedient when we're alone with God. We heard on the screen earlier in the, the video that getting up at 4.30 in the morning and spending an hour with God has benefits in the kingdom. Last year, I invited you to spend an hour alone with God on a daily basis. I encourage you to do it. This past year, I've tried to do that. I've missed a few days, as I'm sure most of you have. It's a few days I didn't get my full hour in. And like many of you, some of those days, maybe the hour turned into a little longer. But I want to encourage you to do that again. But it also, I want to encourage you, as it says in Psalm 46:10, be still and know that I'm God. As the president of CCDA, my longing is for every one of us, a part of it, is to have a deep, deep, deep personal relationship with God through his son Jesus Christ I'm not talking about getting saved I'm talking about being a disciple that's what John talked about in his Bible study and if we're a disciple of Jesus Christ we're obedient to the Word of God now if there's anyone here that would like to just come forward today if you'd like to just come forward and just to say, you know what, I have sinned and I've fallen short of the glory of God and nobody's going to say anything to you. You're just coming on your own. But let's, let's bow our heads in prayer. 
And if anybody would like to just come forward to just kind of confess that you've struggled in an area, you've messed up, you've fallen, come forward. Just come up today and just repent before the Lord. In your own way, you just confess your sin to the Lord. Confess where it is that you struggled. If you want to get on your knees, feel free to get on your knees. If you want to lie down, this, this is your time as you come. Speak to the Lord. Confess where you've fallen short, where you were not obedient. And as you come before the Lord, as John said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. Lord, we come as CCDA members. We come as people who are fallen. We come as people who haven't always done it right. Lord, I thank you for my sisters and brothers who are coming. Now, just in your own way, I'm just going to give you a little time of quiet and silence to you pray, confess, and give that over to the Lord. Could be arrogance, could be pride. Could be any number of things. Lord Jesus, we just come to you now. And we, we've come humbly before you, not as a show, not, not, to, not to make some dramatic statement, Lord, but literally hundreds have come forward, Lord. You see your servants, and they've come forward to just admit that they've fallen short of the, your glory. We've been disobedient, Lord. I'm forward also. Lord, I bring come to you, and I confess my sin before you. I confess my pride to you, Lord. I know I get prideful sometimes. Lord, forgive me for that. Lord, I want to be 100% obedient, not partial obedience, Lord. And in CCDA, all of the people who are here, we want to come to you, and we want to be 100% obedient. Lord, we, we give you our life. We humbly come before you, and we confess our sin to you, Lord. And now we know that you are faithful and just and you forgive us of our sin. And with our own personal forgiveness, Lord, then we go back into our community and you begin to use us to heal the land that we're in. So, Lord, we just commit this to you. I pray for every person that came forward today, Lord. I lift them up to you. I pray that whatever it is that's on their heart, that they sense the need to come forward, Lord, that you would help them to deal with that in their own lives in a realistic way. Lord, we just give them to you. And I pray that you would work in every life. And we thank you that you've forgiven us, that we are sinners saved by grace. And so, Lord, we pray this and we pray all of this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all of us in the kingdom of God say, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all.